One of the most commonly asked questions about the subcontrabassoon project is, wouldn't the lowest few notes be too low to hear? Now, I talk about this on my website in the FAQ section, but the question comes up so frequently that I thought it would be worth making a video. So what is the range of human hearing? Though the answer varies from person to person and also according to the listening environment, the most commonly cited range is from 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz or 20 kilohertz. In musical terms, this would be between a very flat E0 and E10. So how does this compare to the range of the orchestra? Well, if we only include commonly available instruments, the low range of the orchestra would be A0, playable on the piano, some contrabassoons, and theoretically playable on tuba, though very rarely written. On the upper end, we have C8, playable on the piccolo, piano, glockenspiel, and as an artificial harmonic on the violin. So right off the bat, we notice that the range of the orchestra is skewed towards the low end. We have a gap of a perfect fourth between the low range of the orchestra and the lower limits of human hearing, whereas on the top, we have a gap of two octaves and a third. If we include less common instruments, like the organ's 32-foot stop, capable of playing down to C0, and the keyboard's glockenspiel, which is very occasionally built with a range to G8, this discrepancy becomes even more pronounced. We've now exceeded the supposed lower limit of human hearing by a third, yet we're still an octave and a sixth from the upper limits of human hearing. Why is this? Well, it's important to remember that when we say something like the pitch of A4 is 440 hertz, what we really mean is that the pitch of A4's fundamental is 440 hertz. If we imagine a bowed string, the fundamental would be the pitch that's produced when the string vibrates as a whole. But real instruments are more complicated than that. They don't just vibrate as a whole. Because while it's vibrating as a whole, it's also simultaneously vibrating in halves, and thirds, fourths, fifths, sixths, sevenths, and so on. These divisions produce the notes overtone, which, together with the fundamental, form the notes harmonic spectrum. And without overtones, a note would no longer have any timbre, any color. So a middle C played on the flute would sound exactly the same as a middle C played on the violin or the tuba, for that matter. Which is to say they would all sound like a sine wave with a frequency of 262 hertz. So if we go back to our keyboard, when we hear A4 played on an acoustic instrument, though we may be expecting this, what we actually hear is closer to this. And now, the orchestra's bias towards the low end of human hearing should make a little more sense. If we imagine a woodwind instrument capable of playing an octave above the piccolo, up to C9, that note would only have one audible harmonic. The large majority of the instrument's sound would be lost outside of human hearing, leaving a relatively colorless squeal. In contrast, Take the lowest note of the subcontrabassoon, A-1. Even though that note's fundamental is a perfect fifth below human hearing range, the overtones and the large majority of the note's total sound are well within human hearing range. So how does this missing fundamental alter the sound of a note? Well, let's take a moderately low note like A-2 which has a fundamental frequency of 110 hertz. So here's the note with the fundamental. And now I'm going to fade out the fundamental. Now if you don't notice a difference as I do that, you're probably listening on a device that's incapable of producing the fundamental anyway. 
uh, maybe a small laptop or uh, phone external speakers. And here I've brought the fundamental back in. And now I'm going to fade out the overtones. This demonstrates just how important those overtones are to the sound quality of a note. When I took out the fundamental, the timbre of the note didn't change drastically. But without the overtones, the sound is entirely different. Now if I jump down three octaves and try to play you the fundamental of the planned lowest note of the subcontrabassoon, you shouldn't hear anything. That is, unless whatever device you're listening to this on has some sort of hardware bass boost that simulates those overtones so that you can hear the note. But if I take a contrabassoon's A0 with its multitude of overtones and digitally pitch that down an octave to A negative one, the sound is easily audible. Now if you're listening on a device with very small speakers, then the tone quality will suffer because you're not just missing the fundamental, you're also missing the second, third, fourth, and maybe even more harmonics. And just to be silly, let's take that same A0 on contrabassoon and pitch it down two octaves, so A negative two. Now I'm not doing that to imply that there's a need for some sort of octo sub contrabassoon. At that depth, there's almost no discernible pitch due to the numerous missing harmonics but rather to show that even a full octave below the planned range of the subcontrabassoon, the note is audible. Now one final note I'd like to make involves the piano. If you don't play the contrabassoon, the contrabass, or the tuba, then your first-hand experience with the contrabass register probably comes from the piano. Though it's a beautiful instrument, as a contrabass instrument it leaves some to be desired. Specifically, as there's no bow forcing the strings into harmonic compliance, the lowest register of the piano suffers from a high degree of inharmonicity. Essentially, as the strings become thicker and less flexible, they begin to function less like acoustically ideal strings with acoustically ideal overtones, and more like metal rods hit with hammers. Piano tuners compensate for this by using so-called stretch tuning, where a note's fundamental is tuned flat so that the overtones sound in tune with the notes above. And I bring this up not to disparage the piano, but to caution against thinking of the lowest notes of the piano with their clangorous, sometimes discordant tone quality when imagining the lowest register of the contrabassoon or the subcontrabassoon. And as always, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you're interested in seeing the subcontrabassoon become a real instrument, please visit my website, subcontrabassoon.com, and the crowdfunding campaign on Indiegogo. Thanks.